more and more employers are seeing the benefits of having telework programs and practices in place. Here to tell us about a new tool that quantifies cost savings is Kate Lister, Principal Researcher at Telework Research Network based in San Diego, California. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about your telework research. I'm particularly interested in the telework savings calculator tool. Yeah, it's something we put together uh, several years ago. I mean, it's kind of evolved over the years. Uh, it shows what employers and the community and individuals can save through teleworking. The numbers are just staggering. I mean, every time I look at them, uh, it shows that an employer can, can save $10,000 per employee for just half-time telework. At the uh, employee level, uh, they can save between two and eight thousand dollars a piece. Again, just half-time telecommuting. At the national level, if you put all this together, and, and only talking about the people who hold jobs that can be done at home and that they want to work at home, because only about eighty your your own research shows that only about eighty percent of people do. In two years, we would pay for the 10-year cost of the new health care program. I mean, that's what kind of numbers we're talking about. On the pollution side, we would reduce our Gulf oil imports by almost 40 percent. It would be the equivalent of taking 10 million cars off the road. But that's, that's what the uh, calculator does. And we, we tried to be conservative in putting it together. Uh, at first, we were, we were estimating full-time telework and then did some research and found out that on average, it's really only about half time for people who do work at home. But less than 2% of the national population considers home their primary place of work. So we started looking into, OK, what are the increases in productivity? And fortunately, now having been doing this for 30 years, uh, federal government uh, has a lot of data on it. Sun Microsystems, now part of Oracle, they have a lot of data on it. And companies showed over and over again the trend of something between 25 and 45% increase in productivity from people that worked at home. So we sort of used the skinny end of that and said, OK, let's say a 27% increase of, of uh, of productivity. Same with absenteeism and turnover and you know just looked at we looked at over 250 studies on this topic and tried to focus on the ones that, that, that did the best research. Most of them I would say came from the actual federal government itself because they're one of the original telecommuters. It's actually been a mandate, a lot of people don't know this, but it's been a mandate since the year 2000 that every federal worker is to work at home to the maximum extent possible. Only 5% do, and that's been a problem. But uh, they've actually been a leader in telework, and they also like to gather a lot of numbers, so that helps us in figuring things out. With impressive numbers like that, it seems like a no-brainer. I know. Why then is it that there is still some resistance to it? It does seem like a no-brainer, but what we're dealing with is management attitudes that were born in the days of typing pools and sweatshops. Fundamentally, they just don't trust their employees. Something like 70% of managers say, oh yeah, I trust my employees. Um, and about 40% of, 40 of them say, but I like to see them just to, just to be sure. We've got to get to a point of results-based management where you don't really care where your workers are working and what they're doing and what time they're doing it. I mean, maybe they're more productive at midnight and so you know, they're working at midnight. If they're producing, if they're getting results, if they're meeting their goals, then say no more. Based on your research, what do you see as the future of telework, not just in this country, but around the world? I think we're seeing kind of a perfect storm here developing. You know, before the recession, the workforce issues, being able to hire and retain good people, was one of the top management concerns. A study done uh, last fall showed that I think it was 70% uh, of employees were either looking for a job currently or planned to after the recession was over. So those workforce issues are going to come back. The environmental issues are building as well. Companies are going to be forced to reduce their environmental footprint. There's going to be sanctions, there's going to be taxes, there's going to be city access fees, and there's no way to, to no cheaper, easier way, for that matter, popular way, to reduce your carbon footprint than to have your, your, your workers working from home. And then we've just come off of the recession, or we're coming off of the recession. Uh, numbers uh, are in companies' mind, but on bottom line, and so, it's one of the reasons we put together the numbers in the uh, telework savings calculator to show just how much it would save. So I think all those things are coming together. And here in the U.S., those are going to be drivers. Technology has finally come of age. You know, 30 years ago, it, 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 it 
it was difficult to, to manage remotely. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we could be having this, this, this conversation virtually. Looking outside the U.S., are there any cultures where you think telework just may not fly? I haven't seen any cultures where it wouldn't fly. I've seen a lot of different reasons why it does fly uh, in different areas. Asian countries, for example, pollution is a very big issue. And so trying to cut down on the commuter travel and trying to cut down on, on uh, uh, building uh, footprints. In uh, companies like, uh, or countries like um, Africa, there just isn't enough employment there to raise the standard of living. And so they're looking for jobs outside of Africa. We had a call from the uh, Prince Edward Island in Canada. They've got the same problem. They're an island. And they, it's all they can make is with the jobs on the island. So they're looking for ways to, to increase their standard of living. In Muslim countries, they see it as a way to prevent gender mixing. So there's lots of things driving it from, uh, from different countries. Right now, the, the US is, is in a slight lead uh, over uh, other countries. But the UK is very interested in it, Ger Germany is very interested in it, uh, Japan is very interested in it, and uh, they've got some very progressive programs. Thanks for joining us, Kate. For World at Work, I'm Marsha Rhodes. Mm -hmm.